is seeing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ask Allah for these things and these three points and the one which was refused is that the Muslims would not break into segments, become segmented and attack each other. And we see that happening now, don't we? Presently. It's a global phenomenon. Phenomena. And let's talk about some of the things that the Prophet said will happen in the last days. He says, I seek refuge in Allah from these things reaching you. Number one, evil does not spread throughout the people to the extent that they proclaim it openly except that plague and hunger will spread among them to such a degree, degree that was previously unknown by their predecessors. Evil does not spread throughout the people to the extent that they proclaim it openly except that plague, meaning that people will openly involve themselves in, e in evil. They won't even hide it or act like, well, you know, this is not a good thing. We shouldn't do it in the public. Let's do it in private. They just do it openly. And as a result, plague and hunger will spread among them. This is one of the results. Number two, people will not reduce in measurement by cheating with the scales when buying and selling, except that they will be overtaken by drought in the lands and burdensome obligations and by the oppression of the ruler upon them. This means people, particularly the merchants, who are cheating the people on the scales when they have to weigh the merchandise, they're doing different types of things to cheat with the scales. And this is a very serious affair, Islamically, as you says, what will hopefully be overtaken by drought in their lands and un abnormal obligations and be oppressive rulers would be placed over them. Number three, they will not refuse to pay zakat. This is a poor due, meaning that if you have a certain amount of money in the bank at the end of the year that you're not using or some property that you may have or some business that you account for that, and at the end of the year you pay 2.5% for the needy, for the poor. They will not refuse to pay zakat on their wealth except that they will be prevented rain from the sky. And were it not for livestock, they would not receive rain altogether. Meaning that if the people hold back pay who have to pay, there's a cut that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will stop the rain. So if you're in a place where there's you know little or no rain, you need to think about that. Are the people paying their poor due? Are they taking care of the poor folks from what they have based on what Allah is delegated for us or not? Number four, they will not break Allah's covenant and the covenant of his Prophet wasallam, except that their external enemies will be given rain to subjugate them. Enemies that will take something from what is in their hands. So if the people do not obey the covenant with Allah, then the enemies will consume them. So if you're in a place where your enemies are on you, then you need to look back and reflect and see what is going on here. Where, where have we gone wrong? Number five, and as long as their, their imams do not rule by Allah's book and they mock what Allah revealed, Allah will make them strength, will make their strength to be used among themselves against one another. So when the imams do not rule by the book of Allah and they mock what Allah revealed, then Allah will make their strength to be used among themselves against one another, meaning the people will fight each other. And particularly not this small thing, because he's talking about the people of knowledge. The learned people will be fighting each other. And unfortunately, we see this today. That oppression is happening among the people who have knowledge. And we should be worried about this condition. We should be calling everyone to obey Allah 24-7, to do the best that they can to obey Allah SWT, to strive for righteousness and to support each other, encourage each other under all circumstances and to join together to support Allah's deen wherever it is that we can. 
and particularly first and foremost where we live and with our children and with our families and with other families who are like us who think and act like us that we should be uh, a shield for each other and to protect our environment and all the things that are there in the environment so that those things will be there for the future of the nation. This is part of our responsibility in relationship to obeying the commandments of Allah SWT and seeking Allah's mercy under all circumstances to strive for righteousness, to be obedient to the commandments of Allah SWT in the way that He has prescribed, not in the way that we desire. To look at this Islam as an ocean, and I'm just a small swimmer in an ocean, and I need the help of Allah to survive. So we should think about what it is that we're doing, how we're going about doing it in relationship to what Allah, Allah SWT has commanded us to do, and that which will be most beneficial for ourselves and for our friends and family members, and that will help us develop the skills that are required to move forward as a nation, to invite all of mankind to the wonders of Allah SWT. So we thank you for joining us and we look forward to seeing your future programs here on Sharjah TV. My name is Tariq Khalid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.